Okay, uh, it's the weekend, and um, I promised to do a series of uh, screen recordings on um, everything you need to teach and learn online. And uh, the previous one to this was uh, talking about independence and kind of explaining the perspective that these uh, recordings come from in that I'm looking for tools that everyone and anyone can easily and freely access quickly, set them up, and start running with uh, either teaching or and or learning, research, etc. And so after independence, um, I'm thinking, after the statement of independence, I'm thinking, um, what would be the first thing? It's kind of hard to think in sequence of these sort of things, what should come first and second and all that sort of stuff. So it really is in no particular order. But <coughs> I find after the six or seven years talking about this sort of stuff, it always comes back to the blog, and a blog is—it's um, pretty much like an online log book, where originally researchers were using it to, when they find something interesting on the internet, they'd copy the link, bring it back to their blog, paste the link, and then leave a note about what it was like for them and what, how they think they'd use it and stuff like that. So obviously that has connections with with learning, um, and other researchers were noticing each other's blogs, subscribing to the blogs and following what they'd find. And uh, as we know, the internet's come a long way since since that, and we've got other tools like Delicious uh, that make that very quick and easy to do. And then blogs have kind of gone on to become everything from a teenage journal or diary right through to I use it for my own professional development or notes and uh, research and things like that, but also for the primary location for an online course that I might be teaching. And a lot of people do this. Conferences do it too. They have a conference website and the landing page is pretty much the blog, which is the latest information about what's happening. And for those of you who are in institutions and are probably using learning management systems like Moodle, uh, it's very much the same. Um, Moodle lays itself out in topics or weeks and they sequence right down the center, center page. Uh, and a blog does the same thing. It sequences itself in, in the order of the most recent post at the top. And, uh, of course, you can just set it up to be static. You can put seven posts in there and never touch it again, and that, in that way it would be just like Moodle. And there's a lot you can do with the blog. So let's just have a look at the screen, see how this turns out. <laughs> so it's that way. So we're looking at Blogger, blogger.com. And uh, what you do is, you, if you have a, a Google account already, Blogger's owned by Google, but if you have a Google account already, you just sign in here. But if you don't have a Google account, you click that big orange button, and that's create a blog. And the screen that will come up is a prompt you for a Google account. And you just put in your usual stuff for a form. But you can see here that's one, two, and three steps. Excuse Eve's having a little bit of a cry. She might even kick off soon. That'll be the end of this recording. Um, so step one is create an account, which is the screen we're on. Step two, it says name your blog, which is very simple. You just put in a URL, which is the http colon slash slash the name of your blog dot blogspot dot com it would be. Uh, choose a template, and there's thousands of templates you can choose from. They give you a limit of, I don't know, about nine templates to choose from, just standard ones, but you can change your template, and that's your look and feel, the design of your uh, blog, colors and th things like that. Okay, so once you've signed up an account and you've created a blog, the control space of it all is this dashboard. And I've got a ridiculous number of blogs. Well, not too bad, I suppose. 15 blogs. But some of them are shared blogs with projects and stuff like that. And they list all down here. These are all my different blogs on Blogger. And as far as I know, you don't have a limit. You can have as many blogs as you want. So if you're a teacher teaching, uh, I don't know, six or seven units, then a blog for each unit. If you're a student learning six or seven units, or studying six or seven units, then a, maybe even a blog for each one of those units, um, or just one blog and uh, and put it all in the one space. But it's uh, here in this one blog here. It's called o Open Academia. It's a recent one I've set up with a colleague at University of Canberra, and uh, we're setting up it up to be a course blog or a workshop blog. And there's the blue button here, New Post, and you click that, and that'll take you through to creating a new article on there. Edit posts, settings, layout monetize, that's the Google ad revenue sharing, or just view blog. So we'll have a look at view blog. 
We'll just see what it looks like. Uh, how are you going there? It's pretty dark, I can see. Okay, but yep, the basic structure is you've got this banner which you can customize, navigation tabs, and on here we've got news, which is the blog really, about, which is a separate page in this blog, workshops, separate page, excuse me, who's in, which is um, all the people involved in the project, the research that's coming out of this project, and the wiki. Uh, which is like the source of this course, where, where we do all our preparation and note-taking and stuff like that before we copy-paste it through to the blog. And then down the side here, we've got just a few of the types of, they're called widgets that Blogger give you, little tools that you can add to your blog. And this is a quick little survey um, tool and the archive of the blog and the copyright notice. Very easy to set those up. And through here is, like I said, the sequence of the blog for the oldest post first. If have a look at the pages, we click that tab about, and it's basically gone to a separate page inside Blogger. It's a relatively new feature of Blogger where you can set up static pages. And so in this way, a Blogger can become very much like just your average normal website. And you may or may not choose to use the blog feature, which is the regularly updating information and stuff like that. Okay, but let's have a look at... Uh, the settings behind a blog. The same blog, I'm going in from the dashboard to the settings of this blog. Okay, I realize it's hard to see in this video and I might cre create a screen recording to go over this voice here, but the way it's set up is you've got those main tabs across the top, which is posting, settings, layout, and monetize. And then under there is sub tabs, this basic uh, publishing, formatting, and each one of those subtabs have a, r a range of things that you fill out. And I'm not, I'm not familiar with all of the features in here, but uh, some of them. Now, some of the particularly interesting ones, I think. So, in layout, and the subtab, edit HTML. And there, f if you're familiar with HTML and CSS, then you've got limitless control on how the blog looks. You can make it look nothing like a blog and just like a basic start page or you can make it very much like a blog. Or you could pick ready-made templates. Just click that tab there and there's a range of ready-made templates that I mentioned before. Fonts and colors. You can adjust the fonts and colors in the blog and you have this nice little feature, the page elements. So there's a basic standard structure to a blog and there are the widgets that I mentioned about the survey thing and the archive and the copyright thing. You can add hundreds of widgets that you can choose from if you want. Uh, the header, you can change the header in here and the blog posts in here. And that's just a quick, uh, easy way to edit basically the HTML. Now back to the settings tab. There's another aspect here I think some people will be interested in. People who don't like, say, myblog.blogspot.com, uh, they can change that to myblog.com through here. So we've just clicked the sub-tab Publishing, and there is the URL currently for the blog. This was open-academia.blogspot.com, and you can change that. Or you can go to Custom Domain. Let's have a look at that. Right, so here we are at Custom Domain, and quite simply, you just put mysite.com, net, or org, check availability, and pay Google for it. Now, you do this for any domain. This is called buying a domain, so yourdomain.com, and you'd buy it, and Google's quite competitive. It's 10 US dollars a year, but with that, you get uh, the Google Apps um, features as well, which is a fair few email accounts and um, other features. Okay, so that's how you can t change your blog, which is for free at .blogspot.com, or for ten dollars a year, uh, could be just you know mycourse.com. And uh, there's all sorts of other things here. If we're looking at the sub tab, email and mobile, then we can set up a um, m email account for you to send to, and it will automatically post on the blog. And you can also send video from your mobile and things like that. You can share different authors in here. That's currently shared between James Neal and myself, so many different people can post to and, and be admins to the blog. That's it.